Hey everybody, I'm Ted from Tabex. In today's tutorial, we are looking at six different ways to set up your packages. The different types of packages that we are looking at are a limited available package. We can limit the availability per store or per customer. We will look at both of those options in this tutorial. The next package is a pay the difference package. We will offer three different tiered packages. If the customer wants to get a higher tiered package while already owning one of the tiers, you can configure it in a way that they only have to pay the difference. We will then look at a temporary package. This is handy if you're doing a specific campaign. You can pre-configure everything and then everything will enable and disable itself automatically. We will then look at a package where the customer has a choice. For example, if you're offering something in different colors while checking out, you could ask the customer what variant or what color of the item that you're offering they would like to purchase. Tabex will then automatically change the command to the proper variant. The next package we will look at is where a customer can give some input. For example, if you want to offer a custom clan tag, Tabex will then automatically alter the command so it includes the proper clan tag. The next package we will look at is a revenue share package. This is a package where you can automatically share a percentage of your revenue with a different Tabex creator. This way Tabex will make sure that everybody will get the proper amount deposited into their wallet. There are chapters in the timeline and in the description. You can use those to navigate around the tutorial. On the left, let's go to packages. In the top right, you can then add new and create a new package. So let's first of all, take a look at the limited available package. While inside of the package that we want to change, let's go to limits. So let's explain what's going on. We have the global limits and the user limits. The global limits is for the complete store and the user limit is per individual customer. The way it's currently set up for this package, there are only 10 packages available each month and each customer can only buy one package per month. Of course, we can change the time frame and change it to something that suits our needs depending on the package that you're creating. The last option, do not include packages that have been removed from customers when calculating limits. So imagine this, there are 10 packages available each month. Every week, a customer can buy one of these packages and back under pricing, we set the remove from customer to one week. Technically, one customer could buy four packages each month. This last option dictates if we only have 10 available for each month and that's it, or if we only have 10 active at any time. If one customer bought this package and it has been removed after one week, if we do not include packages that have been removed, there would be 10 packages available. So with this on, there are now 10 packages available. With this off, there are only nine packages available. Using these three settings, you can create some pretty advanced limited available packages, either to control the flow of how many packages can be sold at any time or to create scarcity in your product. So let's look at the pay the difference package. The way this is set up is actually at the category level. I already made a category called cumulative demo. So let's edit this category. And then under cumulative, you can see that I have both options turned on. It says cumulate the purchases inside of this category. So customers only pay the difference when purchasing a higher priced package. If a customer already owns bundle number one and they want to buy bundle number two, depending on what these bundles contain, it might make a lot of sense to just offer to pay the difference. In this case, it would be a $5 difference to get bundle two instead of paying the full $14.99. Again, depending on what you're offering in your tiered packages, you might want to completely disable a package from someone if they already own a higher package. Let's take a look at our web store. I'm in the cumulative demo category. I am already logged into the web store. We have cumulative packages enabled, but I don't own any of these bundles yet. Let's create a payment for our username and then let's give us bundle one. So let's click on create. We should be able to just refresh the page. Since we configured everything correctly, it will just automatically update. To test the removal setting, I'm going to give myself bundle two. Also create another payment for this. The prices for three and four are still showing the discount. I can also add these to my cart. That is no issue because this is a higher tiered package. But if I try to add the same or a lower package, it will tell me that this is not allowed because we enabled that in our settings. Lastly, on cumulative, if we go to the settings of the category and go to advanced, you can see here, I have these two options turned on. Delete pending expiry commands of other packages in this category upon a new purchase. 
For example, you might set it up so after the package is removed, the customer is removed from a specific group inside of the game. If you're offering tiered packages that are adding people to the same group, but giving different benefits outside of that group, having these expiry commands not properly removed can make it so things don't work as you expect. By configuring the individual packages properly and removing these expiry commands, we're making sure that everything is working as intended. The last option, add any remaining time of other purchased packages in this category onto new purchases. Enabling this will make sure that the customers get the exact duration of what they paid for. Let's say someone has seven days remaining on their package. They take advantage of that cumulative discount that we just configured. Enabling this bottom option will make sure that they get those seven days on top of whatever time frame they just purchased. If you're setting up cumulative packages or categories, I would highly recommend to take a look at these two settings to see if this applies to your package. This is how you use the cumulative options to set up a package where the customer can pay a difference if they already own one of the packages inside of that category. Let's take a look at a temporary package. This is a package that is only available for a limited time, optionally including a sale. And then once the date has passed, everything will automatically disable. For this, we're going to our packages and going to visibility. And then at the top, we can set when we want to publish this package and also automatically remove it from our web store. So let's say next week, and then let's give it a week to run. Let's say we have a special event that week and we only want to run this package during that week. Optionally, we can also disable this package for anybody that is not logged into our web store. Or optionally, we can just completely disable it from the web store. Since we set a publish date, I'm going to leave this off. You can also combine this with the limits that we talked about earlier in this tutorial, creating a temporary package that has only limited quantities. Let's take a look at this top setting in action. You can see here we have two packages, package A choice and package A input. If we log in with our username and refresh the page, we can now see that third package. This way you can create a package that is only available for a limited time. Combine it with other TabX features like the limits, and you can really create some interesting temporary packages. Let's take a look at a package where the customer has a choice. For example, you could offer something in multiple colors. You can see here under variables, I have the helmet custom variable attached to this package. When clicking the drop down menu, you can see all the custom variables that I created. You can create custom variables by going to settings and then variables. Here you can see the list that I already created. And in the top right, you can create your own. So let's take a look at the helmet custom variable. These custom variables work exactly the same as the variables you already are using on Tabex, but these allow you to create custom identifiers and also custom values. So the identifier is the word or variable that you will actually use in your commands. This is not something that the customer will ever see. The description will tell the customer what to choose. Use the description of your package to tell the customer what kind of option they have. We can then choose what kind of input we want to ask. So in our case, we're going to say drop down. So this is a multiple choice option. In a little bit, we will also look at these other options over here. We can then add our options. As you can see here, there's a big button where we can add more. We can remove options. We can reorder options if we want to. Then on the left, we have the name. This is what the customer sees. Then under value, we have whatever needs to be ran in game to represent the item on the left. 310 in game would mean a diamond helmet. These values will be different depending on what kind of game or platform you're running. We can set individual price differences for each item or a percentage of the price. If we want to put 10% on top of the normal price for the diamond helmet, you can also configure that over here. And lastly, we can also set a default item. Let's go to our web store. Let's add the choice package to our basket. And as you can see here, it tells us choose your type of helmet. And this is what we typed in our description. And if configured, it will also tell you the difference in the price. We can then choose our option, add it to our cart, and then continue shopping like normal or continue to the checkout. If you want to ask for input, you can change the multiple choice dropdown to something like a text box. Depending on what you choose, there might be extra options. For example, email address, pretty simple. It has to be a valid email address. For example, for alphabetic, we can set a minimum and maximum length. So let's say we have to do at least three and a maximum of nine. 
I also have this option if I want to allow Minecraft color codes. Depending on your platform, you might have other options. Let's make sure that we have this variable actually attached to the package that we want it attached to. And then by simply adding that package to our basket, it will ask us for our input. So let's do something that is in between that three and nine characters. And then as you can see, it will allow us to add it to our basket. Of course, we want to do something with the choice or with the input from the customer. So we have to use that variable inside of our command. Just as an example, I'm going to say GIF and then ID, which will be the username of whoever is logged into our web store. Then as you can see, when I do the open bracket, you can see our customer variable in the list over here. So let's click it. And then let's say the amount. So let's say one. So this would be GIF Tabex Academy 310, which is a iron helmet and give one of those iron helmets. Just as an example, these numbers will not actually work. But like I said, they will differ between games and platform. Make sure you don't just attach the variable to your package. Make sure you also actually use the variable inside of your command in the proper format. This way you can give the customer a choice or even ask them for a custom input. Incorporate that in your commands and everything will run automatically on the server. Let's take a look at a revenue share package. We can find this under engagement and then creator codes. In the top right, we can create a new creator code. In my case, I'm going to edit the creator code that I already have created. Here you can see the revenue share. This is in percentages. Optionally, the customer discount and then the creator's wallet reference. The creator you're working with needs to sign up for a Tabex wallet. When a customer purchases from your store using the creator code, the revenue share specified over here will automatically be sent to the creator's wallet. From their wallet, the creator can then request a withdrawal. When checking out, the customer can enter a creator code. If the code is correct, it will automatically update the prices and tell you that this is a correct code. That revenue share specified will automatically be sent to the creator. If a creator is having issues finding his wallet reference, I would recommend sending him the introduction video. From the creator codes menu, you can clearly see the state of the different codes that you have. You can also edit or disable the creator code. If this doesn't explain creator codes properly enough for you, take a look at our channel. We recently done a full tutorial on creator codes, but this is how you share a part of your revenue with another Tabex creator. Hopefully seeing all these different types of packages inspired you to set up your packages in a way that you haven't done before. I hope this was helpful. If anything is unclear, feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, thank you for watching and good luck with your Tabex store.